Welcome to day 581 of our Web3 journey. I'm Ed Krasenstein here, my twin brother, Brian. And remember, these videos are being sponsored by NFT Tech. They're an investor in DeSoFi. So big shockwaves going through the social media world this week, uh, culminating yesterday with more news about Elon Musk. Uh, he's starting to take over and he's going to be making some moves. There's been some layoffs, there's been some firings. Are we going to be on ban from Twitter? It's a good question. Uh, I think there's a good chance. Uh, and, and talking about this, DSO user, DSO, which is a decentralized social media protocol, uh, the user Z and Mead made an interesting post on DSO and then shared something on Twitter, which I just want to thank you, Z and Mead. Uh, it was great. But he said, I shouldn't have to pay you to do this, but I will. Four, four diamonds for a retweet of it. And four diamonds is worth about 80 cents or so. He said, the faster the Krasenstein bros are back in action on Twitter, the faster we hit the stratosphere, LFG. Um, and he made a post on Twitter and the, and the Twitter post simply read, at Elon Musk, please unban Krasenstein. They have 1.6 million people waiting. Thank you. And this post was actually retweeted quite a bit, I think. Over there are a hundred comments and likes uh, or a hundred retweets. Uh, but I, I think this brings up a very good point. Social media, there, there's no, no real solution as of yet for censorship. No matter who you censor or don't censor, you're going to have problems on both sides. Elon is in a very difficult situation because it, it's not only the left and right here in the United States, but there's governments, the European government, they have certain rules for what should and should not be allowed on social media. So Elon has his work cut out for him navigating all of that. But I made a blog post this morning and I just gave my thoughts about what happened to us, our banning on Twitter, of course, but also what the solution could be for Musk moving forward. And and frankly, I think the solution is either DSO or a similar framework to the one DSO uses, and that's blockchain technology, which allows for a decentralized database that anybody can access and pull and push information from. And there's two main topics I discussed in the blog post. Number one is you need to solve the problem of identity. When you don't have, when you allow for just anonymous users who are not uh, confirming their identity, then you're going to have hate speech. People hide behind pseudonyms, hide behind an anonymity. Uh, there's a reason why hate groups wear masks, whether it's the KKK or some of the more recent hate groups. They don't want their identity revealed because they realize that their identity is something that their hate-filled actions could come back to, to haunt. And if Elon can solve for identity, I think there's several ways he could. One of them, of course, is something like DSO, where you could have this decentralized identity that could be plugged into thousands of different sites all at once. This identity kind of becomes your soul of the internet. I think that's one solution. Others is just verification, verifying somebody's physical identification card or passport. I think that will go a long way. It's tough. It's expensive. But it's something I think Elon could manage. And number two is just the, the decentralization of the data. The ability, right now, Twitter and other traditional social platforms, they, they have this issue where they get stuck in the middle. If they ban somebody, they get attacked. If they don't ban somebody, they get attacked. But what if you didn't put that burden on them? And by decentralizing the data, if Elon was to say, hey, you know what? I'm going to make this data that we currently own at Twitter a faucet. It's going to be like water. Anybody can add water or take water from it and use that data on their own platform, their own front end. And then if Twitter bans somebody, who cares? It doesn't matter. It's not really censorship because that data can still be pulled up. They're banned on the front end. They're not banned on the back end. The data is there. And anybody else, I could create another, another website and pull that data up if I want to take that risk. So that's my solutions. Um, Elon has already already taken out the CEO and, and CFO. Uh, there's going to be a lot of changes at Twitter. I think he's probably going to start unbanning people. I think we have a very good chance of 
being unbanned, whether we use that account uh, in the way we did before, I don't think so. I think we're going to use it more for kind of putting out a unifying message and hopefully bringing some people over to the DSO blockchain or turning some people onto it. Yeah, for sure. So turning to DSO now, DSO's distributing a second airdrop, and that's going to take place at around 1 p.m. Eastern time today, 10 a.m. Pacific. Uh, they made the post yesterday saying that all you have to do to qualify for the airdrop was to reply to the post saying DSO. Just type the word DSO. And it's limited, so not everyone's going to get the airdrop. It's going to be the first how many ever that they decide. But so far, as of this video, there's been over 5,400 comments, over 1,000 reposts, over 2,100 likes, and over 135 diamonds given to that post. So it got action. It brought a ton of new people onto the DSO blockchain. Whether they stay, whether they go, whether they come back, whether they make posts, we don't know yet, but hopefully it increases engagement. I know yesterday was close to 10,000 daily active users, according to Outcomebase. It's good news. Uh, you're going to get $10, hopefully, or you're going to get some sort of amount. They didn't say the exact amount, I don't believe, but you're going to get DSO dollars airdrop to your DowDow account. Uh, it's actually to your DSO account, but you can see it on DowDow. Uh, just like the first one, it's going to be, we don't know exactly how much each person is going to get, but it's it's exciting i think and i think it brings people to the platform yeah i, I totally agree I, i'm glad you see this happening again uh, so what's the little sethi doing yeah so just uh i guess it was last week or a few days ago we talked about how open prosper had brought back individual earnings uh so you could see each account like you go to the craftsman sign account and see how much money we've earned on DSO over a certain amount of time and now Citadel has brought cumulative creator earnings back to Open Prosper. So you can see the total amount of earnings on the DSO blockchain over the last day or over the last seven days or over the last 30 days. Really interesting. Over the last 30 days, for example, there's been over 5,000 DSO earned by over 11,000 different creators. So great stat. Salil, thanks for bringing this back. It's something that I think a lot of the community likes to see. And I think it's a good way to show others who are not on DSO how much money potential there is in coming to the coming to the DSO blockchain. Yeah. Uh, and thanks, Salil. Uh, you've been you've stuck with us through thick and through thin, and uh, you continue to build. So Spadium Stories. Uh, a lot of you may have heard of this. A lot of you may have not. But Spadium Stories, it's an NFT book marketplace built on the DSO blockchain by David J. Ryder, DSO user David J. Ryder. Uh, so it util it's now utilizing Megaswap to allow you to buy books in DSO and other cryptocurrencies. Uh, David J. Ryder and team made a long post, blog post on Zirkles. So definitely check that blog post out above this video on DSO below and on YouTube. You can get the link to it. Uh, and he details everything, how it works. I think it's a really good idea. It's NFTing books and allowing people to buy them with cryptocurrency. Yeah, last year we had David J. Ryder on our show. Great guy, smart guy, and he's doing a lot of great things. So definitely, definitely check out what he's working on. Uh, so I want to move on. There's a lot of news from the social world this morning. Uh, first of all, they announced their post to earn wi winners, uh, sponsored by NFTZ, of course. Uh, these winners were as follows. Stargazer won $10, Randir $9, Clout Women Unite 8, Vampire Campfire 7, Haki NFT Creations 6, Tobias Schmidt $5, Food Curator $4, and Mythica $3. So congrats to all of those people. But there's some more news about Post to Earn. Uh, the social world will soon launch a second campaign, also sponsored by NFTZ. Uh, they will reward all users ranked number nine through 50. So those were the top nine. They'll start doing nine to 50 and give them one US dollar in DSO each, each week. And the new campaign is going to run up until the end of this year. So you've got a couple of months left. So probably eight or nine such contests will take place. And to participate, all you have to do is write an average of two posts a day on thesocialworld.com. So if you're not posting on dsocialworld.com, here's your chance to earn even some more money than you might already be earning on DSO. 
Um, the more likes, diamonds, comments, reposts, and quoted posts you get, the higher up the ranking you will be. Uh, posts who earn DAO will show the rankings of the entire top 50, the posts who earn DAO DSO account. I love this. I, I think it's going to get more people engaged because it, currently people probably feel like, you know, it's going to be really hard for me to get in that top eight list. Is it really worth me posting on a node that I haven't posted on before? But now, you know, the top 50 earn money. Why not? Right. And exactly. I, I mean, there's, there are lots of reasons to post on the social world. So don't, don't get me wrong in what I just said about not being enough to incentivize people to come over. Because the social world does have its differences from Diamond, does have some advantages. Uh, Diamond has some advantages as well. And, but I think, you know, it's worth trying out and you get the hang of it. You get used to posting on the social world and I think you'll like it. I agree. Uh, also, the social world, uh, they released yet another featured video uh, in their goal to release 50 videos of 50 different creators from 50 different countries around the world. And the latest featured creator is Haki of Stamp Art Haki and Haki NFT Creations. She is from the Netherlands. So the, this is taking the Netherlands out of the picture. So if you're from the Netherlands, you lost your opportunity. Haki got it. Uh, remember, you can earn $10 by being chosen for your country by the social world. Uh, great, great idea. I love this. Get you to kind of see who is behind what. I'm going to play the video really quick. Ik heb uh, contacten in uh, Europa, in uh, Japan. Uh, ik kan communiceren met iedereen en ik word er nog voor beloond ook. Daarnaast uh, verkoop ik mijn NFT's ook op dit platform. En ik vind de combinatie fantastisch, omdat het belangrijk is dat mensen op deze manier ook achter de persoon, uh, of meer van de persoon te weten. So what's going on with Lazy Nina? Yes, yeah, so Lazy Nina made a post that there's a new developer update, uh, version 3.0. Point two was just released and it was released in order to address a potential vulnerability that was actually identified by their bug bounty program. So somebody came to them and found a bug, reported it, and I assume they earned some money for reporting it as well. So that's awesome. Uh, it's highly recommended that you update your node if you're running a node. Uh, the core release and the back end release are available on GitHub. Uh, again, you can see the link above this video on DSO or below on YouTube that goes directly to Lazy Nina's post that's linked directly to the GitHub releases. So if you need to update that node, go ahead and do so now. It's highly recommended. Lazy Nina must not be too lazy recently, huh? Yeah, so so you talked a lot about Elon Musk and how he should probably integrate DSO or a similar protocol. And Lens is similar in some ways, uh, for those who have heard about Lens. it's not a layer one like DSO is. It's built, it's a layer two. But it's a deep, you actually reported yesterday, Lens Protocol made a post on Twitter, uh, I think it was on October 26th, so two days ago, uh, that read, due to high gas limits on Polygon and a buildup of Q on our third party relay, there is currently an issue to get transactions mined. We will update the community as soon as this has been fixed. Uh, so this, out, this shows some of the issues that Lens is having with scalability. Uh, to be fair, though, just hours after this post was made, Lens did make another post saying that the issue had been resolved. And I think there are some solutions that some of the Lens community are hoping they they initiate or they you know utilize to prevent stuff like this from happening. But this doesn't happen on DSO. It won't happen on DSO. So. That's an advantage of DSO, uh, being a layer one, having this mass scalability where some of these other protocols don't have that scalability, I think is a huge benefit to DSO as Web3 grows and as more and more people flock into the Web3 ecosystem. Yeah, it, there's, it's going to be interesting to see how the decentralized social space develops over the coming couple years. Um, I think DSO is definitely... Up, up there, probably ahead of everybody else. But Lens is definitely one that we want to follow. There might actually be some crossover between the two. Uh, so I, I think that, like Nader says, 
it's not really competition. Everybody's working together in a way. Yeah. So Jacob Van, one of the core team members, made a post yesterday saying that he's currently working on some DSO videos for both TikTok and YouTube Shorts. Uh, he asked the community what topics they would like to see covered. Uh, again, get the link above these videos or below it. You can reply to Jacob Van and let you let him know what topics on DSO you'd like to see covered in these YouTube Shorts or TikTok videos. I must say, I've been becoming a fan of YouTube Shorts. Yeah, definitely. And, and I actually replied to Jacob Van's post. I said that he should make some videos explaining why NFTs on DSO along with the royalties and this and the splits are so much better than these other protocols, especially Solana, who just pretty much gave up on royalties. Magic Eden, of course, said that royalties are going to be, uh, it's, they're not permanent. They, they don't have to, they're, they're basically an option. Um, so I think there's several benefits to DSO when you minting NFTs. And I think a video of short about that could be quite valuable. Yeah, definitely. So getting on to GemStory, uh, GemStory is an app that's built on DSO blockchain, kind of started out as a troll of sorts, I think, at least that's what the community thought, until Brutal, the developer behind it, actually started really making the app work well. Uh, we talked a little bit about this, I guess it was last week, that he wants to make a light version, make a super fast version of GemStory. He said he has started the development of the light version of the GemStory app. The main idea is to make it as fast as possible uh, for people to interact with the DSO blockchain. This way, people in areas that have super slow internet, maybe some third world countries, developing countries, are able to access DSO on super slow internets. And I think that's something that's really important when you talk about Web3 is that you give access to it to the entire world, not just to the people who can afford it, you know, the people who can afford super fast internet. So props to Brutal for, for working on this. He said he's using solid JS JavaScript library. He's cre basically skirting away from the DSO identity, I guess. He's not a big fan. I uh, can't wait to see this get developed and can't wait to see as more and more of this is released. Yeah, I love what Brutal does. Uh, we seem to talk about him every day and that's because he's a workhorse. Yeah, so as many of you guys know, NFTZ.me is the only place currently on the DSO blockchain where you can post and view live timed DSO auctions for NFTs. Uh, if you go to NFTZ.me forward slash auctions, you'll see all of the auctions that are ending soon. Uh, I'm just going to highlight a few that are ending in the next 24 hours. There's several Unicat NFTs. Uh, of course, Unicat's an OG NFT series on DSO that are ending today. They're being auctioned off by French Connector. Also, uh, Clay, Clay Oglesby. Clay Oglesby is auctioning off. He's going to be auctioning off later today two Unicat NFTs that are Halloween themed. So just pay attention to those as well. Yeah, very cool. I was going to mention that as well. They're just not up for auction yet, but I assume they're going to be up soon. Uh, Eric, Eric, Elric Ericos, uh, photographer, has a really cool photo of a bird NFT that he's auctioning off today. Uh, definitely check that out. There's also another Volpe S Season 1 by DFOC that's ending today. And there's a couple of Bulby NFTs ending today. This is a new series that is really starting to heat up on DSO. Brian and I bid on one. I think we won it. Uh, they're very cool. Uh, check those out. B-U-L-B-E-E. -E. Uh, have several that are ending today. Yeah, uh, so I want to get to, to the top NFT bidders on the DSO blockchain over the last 24 hours. According to NFTZ, they are as follows. Dead Metal, Ambitious Lynch, OTZ Gallery, Millhouse Van Hooten, Apertures, Studio Richards, Diego Robot, Dan Pasquale, Meta Philosopher, and Baron Rouge. And the top diamond creators over the last 24 hours, thanks to our friends at Alton Base, these people receive the most diamonds or tips on their posts and replies on the DSO blockchain. And they are as follows. Webos, ZN Mead, who we spoke about earlier. Thanks, ZN. Uh, Goldberry, who is our unofficial intern. Panini, BK Power 8, Krasenstein, which is of course us, Lil Lover, Apertures, D Social World, and ECOE. And the events on DSO, thanks to Miss KDN once again for providing this list to us at 2 p.m. Eastern Time is DSO Weekly on Twitter, uh, Twitter Spaces, of course, with Tori Seller. 
Uh, Tori's a great guy. Definitely check that out on Twitter space at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Also at 2 p.m. Eastern time is learn about communities, communities, office hours with Michael Mara, Sean Chan, and others on Entra. At 3 p.m. Eastern time is just chatting on Vibe Hut. Uh, 5 p.m. Eastern time is crypto happy hour with Shane Rayner, Darian Parrish, Jim Draper, and others on Vibe Hut. And at 5.20 Eastern time is the hot box with Extinct on Twitter spaces. So that's all the news we have for you today. Uh, maybe we'll be back on Twitter soon. Maybe we won't be, but I do know one thing. We'll always be on DSO. So everybody have a great rest of your day. And we'll talk to you tomorrow.